All right. So what we are going to do today is we are going to continue with our study of where we missed left last week uh, on studying on Jehovah's Witnesses, and we will continue on that. Feel free to discuss with me, uh, ask questions while I am teaching. Let's stay with the questions with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. We'll pick up with other groups later, but right now we are concentrating on Jehovah's Witnesses. We can discuss you whatever questions you have, no matter what it is, we will talk about it. Or you might have had some experiences with the Jehovah's Witnesses. We can talk about it. Or some thoughts will come in your mind. You can share it. All right. Um, and so, last week we saw how to witness to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Remember, they are also precious souls and they, God is bringing them to your door and you should be ready to share the gospel to them, right? You should be ready to share the gospel to them. You should not be um, losing that opportunity, but at the same time, uh, if you are not really good with the scripture and you are new in the faith, then what you must do? It's better to ask them to come the next time and not take a risk because they are very good in manipulating and controlling your mind with smooth words. Remember one thing with the Jehovah's Witnesses, they will, while they are talking to you, they will always keep their tone low. They will never become extremely aggressive. They will not get angry. They will always speak calmly. Alright? They will always speak calmly and uh, more and with those kind of attitudes people are drawn towards them you understand you will never hear a catholic priest standing on the pul on the uh, altar and preaching with passion he will be with calmness and smoothness he will speak and people are drawn to smooth things right in the bible i think we read about that in the old testament uh, how the people will be deceived with smooth words, right? Um, where is that? It's not on my mind, but let's find that verse in the Old Testament. Um, do we have that? There is a you know, they speak about to the prophet, you know, speak to us smooth words and Isaiah 30, 10. Isaiah 30, 10. Thank you. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 30, verse number 10. It says, which say to the seer, seers means prophets, see not and to the prophet. So there are. Uh, you know the Bible, the King James Bible basically is a beautiful book where you don't need a dictionary. When you first see the word seer, you may like, who is this seer? What is he seeing? He's seeing the future, right? But how do we understand what is a seer? And sometimes people will run to the dictionary to see what is a seer. But the King James Bible is an inbuilt dictionary and it says that in verse number 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets so seer simply means prophets basically the one who speaks about the future seer is the one who sees the future okay uh, prophecy not prophesy not unto us right things speak to us smooth things prophecy prophesy deceit that's the world that we are living in that's the world that even in those days people were people do not want good Today, if you look at modern day prophets, okay, so called prophets, they will never preach against anyone's sin. They will never call people to repent. They will say how God is showing how you're going to have a breakthrough, how you're going to become rich, how the blessings is going to come to you, how God has chosen you for this great blessing. And people like become emotional, they begin to cry and they begin to melt out, and all this meltdown happens. Because that's exactly what people want. It's all about deliverance. It's all about breakthrough. It's all about blessings. All about how money is going to come. 
prosperity will come to you how you are going to build a house buy a car uh, you know big big all these smooth things and that is what modern day prophecy is and that is what even those days people who did not love god wanted they want smooth and and they want deceitful words from prophets so there they are saying in verse number 10 which say to the seers see not and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceit prophesy a deceit so that's exactly and so when you come across all the cults like jehovah's witnesses mormons uh, seven day adventists or whatever cult you know you will find they will come with all these smooth talks okay sooth saying smooth uh, look at first timothy chapter 4 Okay. First Timothy chapter four, and Second Timothy chapter four. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter four, verse number nine, uh, verse number one. Now, now means what? Now. now, today, right now, right? Even when the Spirit of God wrote that verse, now <coughs> it was at that time, and He also means now, this time. Now the Spirit worketh expressly. that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirit how does the spirit seduce you through smooth words seductions okay seducing spirits and doctrines of devils any doctrine that says jesus is not god is a doctrine of the devil any doctrine that says that jesus is not god is a doctrine of the devil okay speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron okay then we see in verse number 3 regarding the catholic forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which god has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth come to second timothy chapter 6 chapter 4 second timothy chapter 4 ah uh, verse number 1 i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word You know what the word of God is going to do when you preach it's going to encourage you it will bless you it will correct you it will offend you it will mend your heart it will break your heart it will help you it will crush you and it will lift you up the word of God will do a mighty work but the word of God will never lie to you it will never lie to you prophets will lie to you they will lie with deceitful words seducing spirit smooth words okay but god's word will never lie to you preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove that's the way to preach okay how do you preach was to preach the what what to preach preach the word okay be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure what so this is the time okay they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers 
Having what? What does that itching ears mean? Smooth words. It makes you feel good. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. How many of you in this room? Let me ask the blank, straightforward questions. I know you are faithful in God's word. You've been continuing in the word of the Lord. How many of you in this room can say, until rapture, I will never move away from this truth? <laughs> Nobody's sure, isn't it? <laughs> like someday you offend me, I'll be out of here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay? But we all need to have that thing, Lord, I don't trust myself. My flesh is weak. I can be easily offended if I want. But Lord, my heart's desire is, I want to stay true to your word. I want to be faithful. I don't want to be out of your word. No matter what happens, please help me. Protect me. Give me the grace to fight my flesh and feed my spirit. If you feed your flesh, your flesh will grow. If you feed your spirit, your spirit will prosper. Hmm? And so, just keep in mind when all these things happen. Look at verse number 4. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. And your afflictions. You're going to have afflictions in life. Afflictions from within. It will always begin from inside. Someone in our church will say something that will hurt you so deeply and badly. And you'll feel like, I'll just get up and get out of this church. Because this brother said this to me. That sister said this to me. And we can be easily hurt. And we will forget what God did in our life. We'll forget what, how the, you know, how God invested in our life. But watch thou. He's speaking personally to you. Because the seducing spirits are out there. They are coming in different forms. They are coming as Jehovah's Witnesses. They are coming as Roman Catholics. They are coming as Muslims, as Hindus, as... Um, Mormons, as Seventh-day Adventists, as Atheists, even as Baptists. I want you to know that in this day and age, there are many Baptists who are not Biblical Baptists. There are some Baptist churches that have women as pastors. <coughs> there are some Baptist churches that have allowed uh, gay couples to be pastors. There are Baptist churches that do gay marriage, but they are not mm. Baptists. They have... Because the word Baptist is an historical name, so a lot of people like to take that name and Satan uses that to hurt the cause of God. So there are many Baptists which are totally away from the truth. And they like to keep that word as Baptist. You know T.D. Jakes? How many of you have heard that name T.D. Jakes? He still calls himself as Baptist, you know that? But his doctrines are not nothing about Baptist. He doesn't even believe one God in three persons. But he still calls himself as Baptist. And there are many people like that. We've got to be very careful. Okay? Even though they are Pentecostal and charismatic, they like to use that word Baptist. And Satan will use that. I remember somebody saying, Pastor, they are also Baptist. So we went there and we, have, we worshiped the Lord there because they were Baptist. Now you've got to know what is their doctrine. Are they Baptistic in doctrine? Biblically Baptistic? Or it is just name? Hmm? And we have to be very careful. Satan comes in different flavors. It's like Baskin Robbins. Do you know what is Baskin Robbins? Yeah? Sorry? <coughs> Read chapter 13, verse 12. Rome, uh, Revelation. <laughs> How many of you like Baskin Robbins? Read Rome, uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 12.
I mean, uh, this is not coincidence, okay? This is not a fluke, okay? Yeah. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Speaking about whom? The Antichrist and the false prophets. Right? You will never see Baskin Robbins things touching like this. It's just like this. It's 1312. Yes. <laughs> okay? So, it is for 31 flavors. Every day for 31 days, it's Revelation 1312. <laughs> okay? But anyway, Baskin Robbins tastes really good. <laughs> okay? Um, I think I like the rose paddle and once I ate and, uh, and after that they stopped it for whatever reason then you don't get a uh, rose paddle's um, uh, flavor in Baskin Robbins but that's the logo of the Baskin Robbins okay anyway Revelation chapter I mean sorry uh, 2nd Timothy chapter 4 chapter, uh, chapter 4 2nd Timothy chapter 4 Verse number 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work. So there will be a lot of afflictions, okay? There will be somebody saying, doing something, gossiping about you. How many of you think that people gossip about you? <laughs> Everybody? Okay, let me see how many of you. Camera is not focusing on you, so nobody is watching. How many of you think people are gossiping about you? One, two, three. <laughs> See? Oh, everybody? I mean, you, you, you guys must be very bad. <laughs> See, I'm the only one. Nobody gossips about me. Everyone speaks good about me. <laughs> you know what the Bible says? Oh, unto you if everyone speaks good about you. Right? <laughs> All right. So, watch that. So, you got to... One thing you must understand. I was thinking about it yesterday. I was talking to someone yesterday and this is the example, uh, advice I gave that individual how to be a faithful member in the church that they are in right now. They are a Baptist Christian. So. I said, brother, <clears throat> the church that you are in is a good church. But you need to go to that church thinking this in your mind. Concrete once and for all. Seal it and never unlock it. The first thing you need to keep one thing in your mind is every word that pastor is preaching, taunting is for me. That's it. Every word that pastor is preaching and taunting is for me. Once you know that, then you will not let anything offend you. You have to face this reality. Now the pastor is not thinking about you. It's not that you are the most important person uh, and he's trying to hurt. No, for, for him, everyone is important. He's dependent on everyone, just like everyone is dependent upon him. And he is not thinking about just an individual. No, he is there to feed and, and, and guide and all this thing. But he's not thinking. But when you are living in a life in such a manner, every word that he will speak will come across to you as a taunting. You understand? Are you with me? When you are living in sin, okay, first thing, if you live in sin, and if you're living in sin, if that whole week you've been gossiping, that whole week you've been lazy, that whole week you have been uh, trying to do things that you're not supposed to do, and then you go to church, and while he's preaching, he's preaching a general biblical message, you know how, what you will be feeling? He's talking about me. It's not that he knows about you. It's not that there was a camera he put inside your bedroom. It's not that there was a microphone that he hid somewhere when he came to visit you. But he's just preaching the word of God. And God always uses that. And we will, all, we will feel what? We will feel like, oh, he's taunting at me. So once and for all, in order to get away from such temptation... You need to make this up in your mind, I said. Brother, remember one thing. Always consider that every word he is preaching and every word he is taunting is all about you. 
so you can say yes it was for me only today once you make up that thing nothing can offend you you know what the bible says nothing shall offend them they that love thy law nothing shall offend them nothing will offend the one who loves god's word but you like to re- now that verse is true right right they that love thy law nothing shall offend them is true but is it true that it is not going to offend you is it true it's not going to offend you the statement the verse is true but you are not true <laughs> it will offend you it's going to hurt you because you are not the bible the verse is true but how you apply it to your life depends upon whether it's going to offend you or not so the way you live for the 6 days monday through saturday depends upon how you receive the words on sunday right so if you are living this life in this manner sunday you come you think god does not love you enough to talk to you <laughs> No there is a reason why God is talking to you on Sunday because Monday to Saturday you lived life in this manner So that is the love of God that is talking but then what happened the truth is nothing shall offend them but the fact is it is offending me because if I'm feeding my flesh it will offend me Okay and your afflictions and your afflictions now This affliction speaks about a lot of persecution outside but it will always begin from inside. If it starts from outside we will fight. But if it if if it happens from inside what we do? We give up. We give up on the truth. We give up on the truth. Now that is the dangerous cavity of Christian life. We give up on the truth. So remember, watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Okay. So don't don't long for smooth words. Okay. Don't long for. smooth words so you will always have the jehovah's witnesses come to you with smooth words the mormons comes with smooth words they will speak so calmly and smoothly that you will feel melted like an ice cream and some of you if you are not careful you will say you know what they are so nice they must be godly because look how they are talking you are standing there and fara 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 every sunday you are doing but look at them how they are you know maybe the spirit of god is in them smooth words okay isaiah chapter 41 look at isaiah chapter 41 Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 4 Did we see this verse last time? I think so, isn't it? We saw many verses that speaks about So we are concentrating on Jehovah's witnesses and it is important for us to know that they will always come with smooth words, calmness. Okay? Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 4 speaks about what Who has wrought and done it calling the generations from the beginning I the Lord What is the name of our God What is the name of our God Jehovah Jehovah that's right okay Uh who has wrought and done it calling the generations from the beginning I the Lord okay the capital L capital O capital R capital D speaks about the Jehovah God okay I the Lord the first and with the last 
I am he. I am <coughs> he. Now look at that thing. Jesus is speaking about that somewhere. So he's speaking about first and the last. But Jesus is also saying something about being the he. Uh, where is it? Look at uh, John 13, verse number 19. John 13, verse number 19. That's speaking about Jehovah God, who has wrought and done it, calling the generation from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first and with the last. I am He. Look at John chapter 13, verse number 19. Now, I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am He. Jesus, did, Jesus was speaking at that time in that cultural mindset and those people understood what Jesus was claiming. Okay, 13 verse 19, John. Okay, they knew what Jesus was claiming and Jesus was claiming exactly what they were understanding. That I am He. He is the first and the last. Alright. Let's look at Isaiah 48, while you are in Isaiah 41, look at Isaiah 48, verse number 12 and 13. Last week we saw Revelation where Jesus is saying, I am the first and the last, right? Hearken unto me, O Jacob. And Israel, my called, I am He. Okay, Isaiah 48, verse number 12. Isaiah 48, verse number 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel. My cold. I am He. I am the first. I am also the last. Look at 13. Mine hand also had laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. The Lord Jesus. Uh, is the creator God, God is the creator and uh, God said I'm not going to share my glory with anybody and here Jesus is still calling in the New Testament I am he I'm the first I'm the last while Jehovah God in the Old Testament is saying now look at verse number 16 you know God is calling let's see who is this Come ye near unto me. Very important words. Underline it. Highlight it. Memorize it. Okay? This will help you always. Underline it. Highlight it. Memorize it. Remember it. Come ye near unto me. Here is this. There are few things that the Lord is saying. Hey, I want you to come close to me. Sometimes some Christians are like Peter from far off watching Christ, right? God says, come close to me. Come close to me. Secondly, he says, hear, him, hear a this. God wants you to come to him, close to him, and he wants you to hear. Hear a this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there am I now who is speaking here look at that and now the Lord God that Jehovah 
and his spirit has sent me. Who is speaking in the Old Testament? Jesus is speaking in the Old Testament. Hmm? Jehovah God and his spirit has sent me. Come in here unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was there am I. From the beginning I am there. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Look at John chapter 8 verse 42. If you have any questions that comes in your mind, you can ask me, okay? Uh, John chapter 8 was 40, 42. 8 was 42. You can put that verse right next to Isaiah chapter 48, okay? Verse 16. You know what I've done? Next to Isaiah 48 verse 16, I put John chapter 8 verse number 42. So when I look at that verse, I know. And next to John chapter 8 verse 42, I put Isaiah 48 verse 16. Look at that verse, Isaiah chapter, I mean John chapter 8 verse 42. John chapter 8 verse 42. Everybody there? Jesus said unto, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, he would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He is speaking in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 16 and he's quoting the same thing and he's saying, I am he. I am that same person that you are talking about. Look at chapter verse number 24. John chapter 8 verse 24. People are dying and going to hell for rejecting Jesus as God. Remember one thing. You can believe that Jesus died for your sin. You can believe Jesus shed his precious blood. You can believe that Jesus uh, was buried. You can believe that Jesus rose again bodily. But if you deny that Jesus Christ is God, you are still going to hell. God is the gospel. God is the gospel. He is the good news. You can believe the dead, bur bur dead uh, death, burial, resurrection, virgin birth, and, sh and you can believe all of that. But if you believe Jesus is not God, you're going to hell. Look at verse 24. John chapter 8. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am, he... What is he speaking about? I am the Lord God, the Jehovah God, the first and the last. Ye shall die in your sins. Okay? Ye shall die in your sins. Let's come to Revelation chapter 2 verse 8 now. These are just uh, random verses I'm giving you. Okay, most of the things, important factor about how to deal with JWs, we saw last uh, Bible study. This is to just feed more to your spirit. Look at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Verse number 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. <clears throat> Who is saying this? John is writing about Jesus Christ. 
is the first and the last which was dead and is alive and in verse number nine the Lord is speaking I know thy works because everybody thinks their work is important works can save them and God definitely honors your work no doubt about it but if you think that works is going to save you that's going to take you to hell God appreciates good works after salvation. But good works is not going to save anybody. You were saved unto good works. You are not saved by good works. You are saved unto good works. Alright? <clears throat> Look at Revelation 22. Verse 12 to 16. Revelation 22, verse 12 to 16. And behold, I come quickly. Who is saying that? Jesus is saying, I come quickly. Now, basically, with these verses, in comparison, this is basically, if you compare with the New World Translation, the New World Translation itself, the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. If they would read this verse that I'm going to show, exactly proves about the Lord Jesus Christ. But they still cannot see it. They have eyes, they cannot see it. Okay? Look at... Um, okay, let, let's look at, look at this verse. Revelation 22, verse number 12 to 16. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the, the first and the, who is speaking? Very clearly. Jesus is speaking. Okay. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are what? Dogs. And sorcerers. And warmongers. And murderers. And idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. All right, now, now we are going to compare something. In Revelation chapter 1, basically this verse that I am going to give you now, uh, you know, if you would ask the Jehovah's Witnesses to read in their New World Translations. They will be able to see it better. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a spirit. Which is the Lord's day? The first day of the week. Sunday is not your grandfather's day. It's not your mother-in-law's day. It's not your holiday. It's not your movie day. It's not your sleepy day. It's not a picnic day. It's the Lord's day. Amen? Amen. No matter what happens in this world, that day you should give to the Lord. Hmm? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. That's a capital S, right? I was in the spirit. You know, you know, I like, I don't know, I, I don't know about you, but I, I believe most of our people, this is what you live for. Okay? 
okay? But me and my family, we leave for Sunday. We leave for Sunday. We are looking forward for that day every day. Sunday is the most favorite day for us. Yes, every day is the Lord's uh, uh, is a beautiful day. This is the uh, day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, definitely. But Sunday, that's what we live for. Looking forward, we are in high spirit. We get to go to church. We got to dress up for the Lord, carry a Bible, sing praises to God, give our offerings and tithes. Listen to the preaching of God's word. Meet God's people. Fellowship with them. Edify, encourage them. It's a high spirit day. Extremely excited. It is the Lord's day. Of course, Monday is a little lower. But Sunday, we are in the spirit. We are excited. We are happy. Isn't it true? It's an amazing day. We all feel the same. No matter what we are going through, we might have done some major sin Monday through Saturday. But then when Sunday comes, we have confessed our sin. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a license. Yes, there are times we may falter. But Sunday, we're so clean. We have asked God to forgive us. We are in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And that's how we are supposed to be on the Lord's Day. Okay. What was I reading? Verse 10. I was in the Spirit. That's a capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. On the Lord's Day. We should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And heard behind me a great voice as of a... Remember, the God is not going to come in smooth voice. Okay. He may sometimes speak in steel voice. But he's not going to tickle your ears. It's going to be like trumpet. It's like a mighty ocean, waves of the sea. Hmm? Saying, I am what? Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Who is the Alpha and Omega? Who is the first and the last? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. 12 and 13. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven, golden, uh, seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. We read this before. And I saw him. I fell at his feet as dead. And, lay, and he laid his... So where did he fall? He fell backward? No, he fell at his feet. We saw God. Right? He saw Jesus. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Why? Because he was in full glory. Hmm? And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive, alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. The Lord is over and over again. Jesus is saying, hey, you read in the Old Testament, the first and the last, beginning and the end, first and the last, beginning and the end. And in the New Testament, the Lord is saying, I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one. Okay. Let's see Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. You know where Exodus is, right? Exodus chapter 3, 
verse 13 and 14. So basically a conversation between God and Moses here. Okay, Lord, you know, how will they believe, you know, you know, what they will, you know, if I say, how will they believe, what would I say? And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me. What is I am means? I am the all-sufficient one for all your needs and for all your wants. I'm the one who fulfills that void. I am. Not I was. I am. I'm the Almighty. I am the one that all you need in your life. You want, you want to tell them the most mightiest one has sent me? I am. The one who heals my sickness, I am. Who is the one who will comfort me in my sorrow? I am. I am the one. Tell him, I am a send me. That is my name. The one who satisfies and fulfills me completely. Who fulfills you? Who satisfies you? You know, no husband can satisfy the wife, no wife can satisfy the husband, the needs. No father can satisfy everything about the children. There will always an empty space in your heart, a longing nurse for something more. And only God can satisfy that vacuum. Only God. You can have a lot and you will still want more. I was talking to somebody yesterday. Oh, um, and they said, uh, you know, we want to go abroad. We want to go abroad and earn more money so we can have more. There's nothing wrong in going abroad and earning. And people all, you know, everybody wants to have a better life, better living. And, and I said, don't you think it's good when your husband is with you? Little is much when God is in it. When the family is together, there is safety, there is provision. When the husband goes away, there is a vacuum. You know, when the husband is there, the father is in the house, the shadow of the father upon the children strengthens their life more. You don't want a son growing up like a mother, tender, compassionate, sweet, kind. That's woman. You want a f man. You want the son to grow up rough and strong. See, something is moving there. <laughs> okay? You want, the f you want the son to... And that will happen when the father's mighty hand is upon the son. When, the, when, when father and mother stays together, the children grow well, stronger. Hmm? And, um, and God is the one who will satisfy everything. Now, you know, a poor person, a poor person, the other day, today I met one guy, a few years back, I met him selling books. Okay? I know, supposed to be JWs, but it's becoming everywhere, study today. <laughs> but anyway, um, I met a guy today, whom I met two years back, he was selling books and I began to talk to him and, and uh, finally I said, he was a young chap, little fellow and I took him to this Bosley restaurant, took him to the AC 
he, he was very happy. He said, sir, nobody took me up. Nobody, you know, took me to a hotel like this. And this is AC. And he was so excited. So I bought him whatever he wanted. And he was so excited and happy. I'm sure I wrote an article on it and you all have read about it. I met him again today. This guy has become tall, very tall and handsome man. He's still selling books outside. And I was in Delfino, I went to buy something. And he, he saw me, he says, hi, sir. And he's, I said, hey, what are you doing? Sir, I'm selling books. I said, good. Then he said, sir, 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 please, uh, you know, buy me wheat and oil. I said, man, look at you. You're a young guy, you have hands and legs. Now you should not be begging. You should be working and earning. You should not be asking me. I myself, I'm feeling embarrassed that you're asking me for these things. And he said, no, sir, I, you know, just please, anything you buy, sir. And I was feeling really embarrassed that this guy has become so big now. He's still asking for this and that. And in my mind, there's always when people ask me, there's something going on in my mind. My heart is already melting. I'm already feeling like I have to give something. But I said, no, no, I will not give you. Then it will ruin your life. You need to work and earn something. But will you drink coconut tender water, I said. And he said, yes, sir, I will drink. No problem. Whatever you give me, I will have. Then I, I looked at, there was a pizza shop right inside the uh, Delfino's compound. So I told him, will you eat pizza? He said, sir, in my life I never ate pizza. This will be the first time if you ever buy for me. And that gave me great joy to hear. Because I remember the first time ever the cafe, co coffee cafe day came to Goa and I ate my burger for the first time ever in my life, okay? Uh, and I didn't know how the burger tasted and I especially went and ate and I felt really good about that. But this guy ate pizza for the first time and I felt so happy that in his life I was the one who bought that pizza. Now. The pizza was more expensive than the atta, okay? Now, I could have given him atta and he could have eaten for a month. But then that would have ruined him. I said, no, you need to be earning. You should not be bagging, okay? But he was very happy because this is the first time that he ate, um, you know, pizza. What I'm trying to say is this boy earns very less and... You know, I'm sure he lives a very simple this and that. Perhaps in his family, he may be living with, you know, 7,000 rupees in a month or something like that. But that man also is alive and living. And there are people who earn 5 lakh a month or 50,000 a month or, three, or 30 lakh a month. And all of us are lacking. We are never satisfied. Right? We really want more. You ask me, I mean, you may be more spiritual than me, but I'm not satisfied. I want more. I want more money. So I can do more. Hmm? And so no one is satisfied. There will always be that gap. And the only one that will satisfy you will be God. He says, God is all sufficient for me. I'll be happy with my needs. This morning I was reading, I know my mind is going, please forgive me for this, but look at this verse. Hopefully this will encourage you. Oh, but it encouraged me, so let me look at Psalm 49. I was studying this chapter this morning, Psalm 39. Hmm. 49 Psalm 49 Look at verse number 16 Verse 16 and 17. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich. Just because someone else other than you has become richer than you, don't be afraid because your enemy has become richer than you. 
Don't be afraid because of your competitor has become richer than you. Don't be jealous just because your junior has more than you. Don't be jealous. Don't be afraid. Verse 16. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. If you read the context, speaking about people doing money in a wicked way, in an evil way, okay? When the glory of his house, this is not the glory of God, when the glory of his house <laughs> is increased. Verse 17. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul, and man will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. Right? Now look at this verse, verse number 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Nobody can save anybody with wealth. Right? For the redemption of their soul is precious and it sees it forever. You cannot buy with wealth. You know, that verse that reminds me, you know, if you win the whole world and your soul perishes, what is the use? Isn't it? All right. Let's come back to uh, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. We're reading verse number 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Since we read that, let's get to John. Uh, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'll tell you what is the preciousness of that verse. You already have figured it out. You already have guessed it. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. This is very important. Underline it, memorize it, mark it. Verse 57 and 59. 57, 58, 59. You know, there's a lot of things in John chapter 8. Remember that. If you go home tonight and if you want to read your Bible tonight or tomorrow morning, Read John chapter 8 as an extra study. Okay? The word, okay, chapter 57, 58, 59. John chapter 8. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Verse 58. So you can read the context where he's saying, I you know Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it. Oh really? Yeah. People everybody was saved by believing in Jesus. Remember that. Okay, no one can be saved by keeping laws. Nobody can keep the laws. Abraham saw Jesus. Verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, What is that? I am. I am. The word there, I am, is the same word in Exodus chapter 3. I am. That's ego ami. Okay? <laughs> ego ami means I am. Ego ami. Okay? Ego, the word ego comes, Emmy. Ego, I'm all sufficient, I am the one. You can talk about anything, I am. If I say I am, I am, that's ego, <laughs> right? Who do you think you are? And that's what Jesus said, I am. I'm everything. And that's God, I am. Ego, Emmy. I'm the one who f fills every gaps of your needs. I'm the one who completes you. 
I am the one who satisfies you. I am the one that you need for all and everything in your life. I am the one. That's why in this world you will not be completely happy about everything in life. Right? You will not be completely happy. Now we are happy. We are thankful to the Lord for everything. But the ultimate happiness only God gives. The every gap in your life that leaves the vacuum, only God can fill it. Only God can fill it. Hmm? Look at Isaiah 46. Uh, sorry, Isaiah 48. You see another verse and then finish it, okay? Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48, verse 16. We saw this verse. Isaiah 48. Was 16. Oh. Mm. Isaiah forty eight was sixteen. Uh, ha, ha, ha. One second. We saw that verse, isn't it? Yes. Isaiah 48, verse 16. I'm looking for something that I'm um, saved some <coughs> notes. I'm looking for that verse. Uh, what is that? Did the power go off? No. That's fine, no problem. Uh -huh. Okay, I think I missed it. Whatever. All right, that's fine. I saved a couple of verses somewhere and I think I deleted it by mistake on my phone. All right, well, Isaiah chapter 48, verse, uh, let me give that, this was John chapter, come, come to John chapter, since we have seen Isaiah uh, 48, let's come to John. So what, at the end of the day, um, when you compare all this thing and you say, yeah, that's what Jesus is, you know, he's the I am of the Old Testament, he's the last and the first of the Old Testament. He is the beginning and the end of the Old Testament. He is the one who has been sent in the Old Testament. So what is, he, what is Jesus saying about all this thing at the end of the day in John chapter 10, verse number 30? John chapter 30, uh, John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my father are one. Now they will say, well, that's not what he meant. That's not, this is the meaning of, no, no. We are not interested in what it means or these. We are interested in what the Bible says. It says the same thing in the Bible. Something else. Let's, good question. Let's see what the NWT says, okay? I don't think it should, it says the same thing in their Bible. John chapter 10, verse number 31. Again, his Jewish opinions picked up soon. Verse 30. 30.
I and the Father are one. Okay? I and the Father are one. And here it says, I and my Father are one. Whatever it is. Okay? Are one or my Father are one. Okay? So the Bible says, I and my Father are one. And here it says, I am the Father are one. It's the same thing. Okay? Same Sorry? Same yeah, capital is Father. Okay? So I and my Father are one. And the JW also says the same thing. I and the Father are one. The KJV says, I and my Father are one. Remember, never take the Bible version issue for granted. Never. The reason why so much of false doctrine is crept into all churches today is by, because of modern Bible versions. And Satan comes into churches through versions today. If he can't enter as a person, he'll enter in the form of literature or Bible versions. And so with little word, here a little, there a little, he, he changes everything. So never, never ever say, oh, well, it's okay, whatever. They also love Jesus. And, you, you know, that's the beginning of fal uh, faltering. That's the first step of faltering. So I and my father are one. Now look at verse 31. So what was Jesus saying? What, wh why did they take stone? Look at that. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Why would they even? So what if he said, I and my father are one? Why did they take stone? Now, I do not know exactly what that meant now, just for, for argument's sake. But these people that time, living at that time in that culture, in that language, they knew exactly what Jesus was saying. So they took stones. Was he giving bad words? Did he say, if you don't kill me, I'll kill you first? He said something, I and my father are. And they took the stone to kill him. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Verse 32. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Look at the answer of the Jewish people. They understood exactly what Jesus said. They understood exactly what Jesus was claiming to be. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blaspheming. And because that thou being a man makest thyself. It's not that they did not hear properly. <laughs> it's not that they were misunderstanding. They understood what Jesus said. And what did they do? They took a stone. He did not say, I was a small God. He didn't say, I was a small God with DNS. You're recognizing me very well. I'm saying I'm capital G-O-D. I am the ego Ami. I'm the almighty God. And they were taken, they took stone to... Stone Jesus, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God, okay, because thou being a man makest thyself God. <clears throat> Verse 34 Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods, okay. Now, who are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and has sent into the world the blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not, but if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Now the, the, the charismatics will take this verse and they will say, look, we are also gods. Okay? Benihin claims that he is God. 
Now, recently, last week, there's another man, Stephen Frederick. He said, I'm the Almighty God. Wow. So when you choose songs, when you sing songs, when you are, you've got to be very careful. Uh, songs from Elevation Church, song, songs from Battle Music, songs from Hill Song. Uh, it's always good to avoid uh, these kind of songs uh, from these kind of groups and churches. Okay? Battle Music, Elevation Songs, Church Music, Hill Songs. Try to avoid. They are very satanic. They are very satanic. Some sounds good, some are good, majority are corrupted. And uh, it may be the most popular songs, so-called Christian songs on the internet. You should avoid those things, okay? And, uh, and nowadays you'll find most of the songs will sound like a love song to a lover. And then at the end they'll put the word Jesus up there. Okay, I made a good favor to Christ. But the whole thing will be something to do with something else. Okay, so be careful with elevation, battle, hill song, and avoid it as much as, okay. So the charismatics would take that verse to prove that they are gods. Hmm? Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, and Justin, uh, Stephen Frutrick, and all those people, <coughs> Joyce Meyer. Pastor, they don't say that they're small G gods, they compare themselves. This guy said he's almighty God. I mean, can you imagine that? The Almighty God. And he beat his chest and said it. <laughs> hmm? Alright, so I and my father are one. Only Jesus can claim that. Only he can beat the chest and say that. <laughs> nobody else. Not you, not me. Nobody else. Alright? So any questions? <coughs> any questions? Yeah. When you said in this uh, verse 38, I am the father of one and I am my father of one, that they are both, they both have the same meaning. See, when you make I and my father, it's very personal. Yeah. You know, Jesus is saying, My father. I and my father are one. Very personal. Yeah. Connection. So they take off that verse, my, and they say, I and the father are one. So they are. Yeah, you know, see, Jesus, Joseph was not the father of Jesus, remember that. So Jesus, if Je I and my father, Jesus is connecting to the Almighty God. So when you say I and the father, it could be Joseph. <laughs> so they are very, so one word can change the whole thing. One word can change the whole thing. All right. Shall we pray? Is you have any questions? Okay. Uh, the question you uh, Ben Miro forgot. I'll remind him about the Holy Spirit being a person. Okay. Now remember one thing. In the Jehovah's Witness Bible, it says the Holy Spirit uh, pregnanted or made Mary pregnant. Okay. The New World Translation, the New World Translation, I'm actually giving them more opportunity to correct in a few years. They'll be correcting all these things again. There'll be new versions that will come again. So in the New World Translation, you know, you know where the Bible says uh, this, it'll be the child of the Holy Ghost, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon, you know. So they will directly say the, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, will pregnant Mary. And yet they would say that the Holy Spirit is just a force and not a person. How can an energy or a force make someone pregnant until it is, unless it is a person? Isn't it? So that's a funny thing. Uh, total wrong. That begins with the right in the first chapter of Matthew, uh, Luke chapter 1. It's a very, uh, you got to be very careful and uh, study your Bible read more, uh, read the Bible, read the New Testament as much as possible. Every day make it a point to read a chapter or more. 
If you're traveling, listen on, in the car, the scriptures. That'll be good. The blessed is the man who readeth and heareth. Right? We're reading in? Hearing faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hmm? So, that's a good thing to listen to the reading of God's word and it's good to hearing of God's word. All right, let's pray.